Okay. Welcome back. This time we're going to go on with finishing up disassembling uh, the receiver halves and get the valve on the pump tube and all that sort of thing and get everything apart and get all the grease off of here, off or in out of the inside of all that stuff. Get it clean enough where we can start working on it on it. See exactly what valve it has. Now we know it's got the variant one pump piston assembly. So I can then order the proper seal kit to take care of that part. And uh, then we'll we'll start the arduous process of using a uh, the de rust and de bluing uh, Birchwood Casey chemical and what other stuff they, that Birchwood Casey makes to get it down to bare metal and start polishing it from 400 grit to 2500 grit emery paper, wet and dry, black sandpaper, you know, and uh, get the metal polished up, including the bolt, the old brass bolt with the brass, uh, looks like an acorn nut for a, uh, bolt handle. And let's see, Friday, the first set of parts supposed to get here, the 761XL style four stock that these things used after they ran out of the plastic ones that flaked apart as you saw in a previous video. And the, the pump arm and the pins that hold the uh, four stock to the pump arm. And here's the pump lever, but the longest one is the elbow pin that goes on the hole in the right there. And the, the two pins that go through these little holes on this four stock here, which is dark enough to match the tone of that plastic butt stock real nice, so I won't have to refinish it, just put some true oil on it. Pump lever, whatever you want to call um, I'll show you here again. And as I noticed before on the new one, these two pinholes on the four stock on the right side do not go all the way through to the left side. So I, I got to looking at the pictures of one of my two revelations here and it's just that. See so, you now looking at the left side of the four stock the, hold, the holes and pins don't go all the way through. So that was done just right so we're okay there. I want the four stock to be darker like that um, faux wood, as they call it, buttstock, the same color as the four stock, it had a, a big piece flake, piece flaked off on the back about that long, as you saw before. And we'll get that to match up as, as well as can be, so it looks like it belongs there. That's that's key. And clean up the buttstock so that I can. Uh, Oh, that was another one, by the way. This Equate lens cleaner like you get at the drugstores and, and Walmart, where they keep the, oh, near near the uh, pharmacy, where they have the, the aisles with all this sort of stuff in there. And this stuff is pretty good for cleaning the plastic stocks with. Equate lens cleaner. And um, anywho, then I will put some uh, put one coat, thin coat of true oil on it, and let that dry. And we're going to sort of seal the surface against losing any more of that oil in the plastic, so it won't flake apart. In, in theory, so that it'll it'll stay in good shape for a lot longer than it would otherwise. We'll see if that how that little experiment, experiment pans out once the once the owner gets his rifle back, and that means you, Jeff, and uh, see how it holds up. I'm curious about that one. There's got to be a way to save the, a few rifles that still have the original stocks on it that variant two started out with. And as I said before, there the four stocks had two different checkering patterns. The butt stocks were all the same, regardless. But, 
we'll finish taking this thing apart take out some more broken screws and we'll see what we got inside this thing so let's hit it reposition the camera to try to so my shoulder is not blocking your line of sight sorry about that so we're going to try to get these screws these receiver screws out that one wasn't even that tight and hope to God that we don't have this thing go fling pop apart and have parts go and fling doing all over the place because there is some spring loaded stuff in here that one's not in there tight either Oh, uh, well, that one's got a washer on it. That's got a, those old toothed washers on the old school lock washers that had teeth around the inside, like a gear. This one doesn't have one. Maybe I should try to find some more of those. And let me get, get out the smaller screwdriver a bit here because that, that big one is so snug, I don't think I can get that back in there. See if that small one there will do it. This this one's a little sticky. Doesn't want to turn real easy, so I'm gonna have to make sure I take something and make and clean out the threaded holes on the inside and you can see that's a pretty long screw compared to the other ones that's just from wiping off the pump tube over here oh wait a minute one more back here. This one just had to crack the torque a wee little bit. And it... And it didn't come out pretty decent. It's... And I, it's See if I can show you this. This is the one here that came out of the, the back right side hole right there. This one came out right here. And I don't know, I think this one's a little larger in diameter. I need to get a real big screwdriver to get the buttstock bolt out that's up in that holder. I don't, I don't know if you can see that. Okay, just ordered this new 20 by 30 table from Walmart yesterday and I got it already with that free delivery. You know, 50 bucks worth of stuff and you get it free anyway. It's got legs, sturdier legs like an ironing board, but you got to take the legs off the tabletop to like put it in a corner someplace. So you got to keep taking it apart to do that. And that'll wear out the little slots under the bottom where you got to snap it in. But it's got all the receiver screws out. And let's see if we can get this buttstock bolt out of here. Yep, I did. I 
I got ahead as soon as you get that loose. And I hate these. The, the switch that lets the BB into the magazine on the, on the top over here. It's got a spring and it makes it almost impossible to get in this slot right there and try to get hold all this stuff in the right position to put these two receiver halves together. There we go, got that. Oops. And pull out the little uh, BB reservoir cover with the spring that goes on, on goes on that little pin right there. I need to get these apart as much as as much as I can, so that I can. Uh, So I can use citrus strip on the outside of these receiver halves to uh, get down to bare metal, clean it up, you know, degreaser, so that it'll look good again with some gloss black rustoleum. That'll be easy enough. Now this one, unlike my variant one. Power Master doesn't have the gold paint on the trigger. It's just plain blued. So Oh, I can't get that darn thing out of there. I need to remove the trigger and I can't get the spring off the doggone pin. Okay, and there's the safety button. I'm prying on all this stuff. This thing is what holds the tension on this safety button to physically let it work. And spring, shaft, and trigger. Take it apart like that for right now. It doesn't absolutely have to come apart. I just got to be able to clean it. And maybe put some molly, molly lube on the... Uh, on this to wear the sear surface and on this pin that it rotates on and all of that so I can take some of the what feels like spring tension off the trigger take a little bit of effort out of the trigger pull and it's got those cheap little flat pal nuts holding the spring on right there for for the sear there, so I'll just leave that because I'm gonna, I'm gonna have it turn like that or like this and spraying from this way anyway. That's pretty heavy, like what it's that's solid, some sort of early form of urea foam. It's got a lot of this, some kind of oil. I know it's an oil, I just don't know which what kind, mind you. But that's got some heft to it. You can hear that that's solid. Okay. Too bad it's brittle. Right, anyway, I'll get this cleaned up. I'll have to wash my hands, clean this up real good, and hit it with some with uh, a coat of true oil to, to seal all that up. Oh, and here I got something I want to show you.
the new uh, pump arm and mounting pins and hinge pin all came in for this uh, 761XL style uh, four stock I'm replacing the broken one with. Once they ran out of the checkered uh, plastic faux wood uh, four stocks, they started using this one. But it's also medium walnut, and that, that's elm. You can tell it's elm wood because of the grain, grain structure. Or, oh well, yeah, I guess you can call it grain structure, character, or whatever. How about that, huh? And once I get some, get that cleaned up and get some true oil on it. Oh, by the way, even on the 761XLs I have, and I got two on the rack over there. These holes for the pins that go through here into the pump arm, so you can physically go like that, don't go all the way through on any of them. I never did. You can see kind of in there, there's, and right here, there are little holes where it goes into this part. But I'm going to see if i got a drill long enough to drill all the way through, because once you put them in, you, can't, you ain't got no hole over here to stick through and pound it out. The, put the roll pin punch in here to pound the pin back out again. Okay, so I'm going to fix that. Pretty good though. Look at the tone. The tone is pretty close. Once I put some true oil on these things, it'll brighten this one up and help that one darken a little and give it more depth. You get, it makes the grain stand out more when you got a clear coat on it. Or even uh, oil finish for that matter. You can see some kind of oily rust here where the oil's break, breaking down and the rust is getting through it, but I'll take care of that. And right here, I don't know if you can see, they're trying to shine a light on it. It says 760 2. So proving that it's a 760 variant 2. Always nice to see. And of course, when I use the when I use the stripper, I have to use a brush to get in here and make sure that's real clean. And this serial number right here, 0424507. Somebody replaced the uh, right receiver half with one from a. I'm guessing April 72, 042. And we got another little screw down in the breech opening there, so that's interesting. It doesn't have that plastic thing on the end of the barrel. Early ones generally didn't. And there's an exhaust port seal right down in here because the air comes through through the valve in here, up through here, and in front of where the bolt pushes the pellet in like that. Or BB for that matter. Oh boy. The one that's broken is the screw that goes into the valve. So we'll have to see if we can get that on. I gotta move the table so I can get up over there and I know I got the okay, I forgot I had them right here. Well we'll get to that in a minute. Well, I was just had a lot of this black dirty grease on there. It has the same consistency and color as, as when, when Molly Lube gets old from shooting it and everything. It, it stuff goes from a primer gray to this, this black color. I got this thick black stuff here off the bolt. You can still see where some of it's kind of stained on there. No big deal. I can chemically clean that and polish it with a Dremel and a stainless wire wheel. Which I am running short of. 
somebody used molly lube on on everything I mean, even even the the barrel band that caps this the end of the pump tube here the in, the in part that goes in here was coated with with the black dirty molly lube you can see in the center here there's a magnet there for that grabs the BB when you took from the upper magazine in here to drop through and push it in Gotta, gotta get all these old pieces parts cleaned. Stuff stains the table too. I've gotta figure out something to get that clean with. But anyway, if I can slip around here, Get around this, slip around this table. I can go over there and get a maybe this Umarex smaller screw screwdriver bit will fit. Be nice if it did. Oh come on! No. Twenty minutes trying to stop shaking so I can get this darn thing out of there. smaller screwdriver here will fit nicely to get oh, wait a minute gotta get that I don't know if you can see that little screw in the breech down there thing up and hold it hopefully hold it up and hold it steady so I can try to get it in here. Okay. Got it. Okay, that's a little screw there, a little breech screw. Goes in this little hole right here, and here's the breech seal I was telling you about. A lot of gritty funk under the barrel. You know, clean the darn thing and all that grit soaks into the oil they're putting on it. And uh, it just makes this gritty, oily, greasy, friendly gopher guts in between the pump tube and the barrel and other little creases like that. You don't drip it on or, or spray it on. You, you, you wet a patch with it and you wipe it on. And I don't mean dripping wet, just where the patch is, just enough oil on the patch where it's moist and then wipe it on. And wipe on, let it sit for a minute or so and then wipe the excess off so the oil has a chance to soak into the bluing and everything. And, Keep everything from rusting and looking nice and all that. Let's see if we can. Now this gasket they call it a gasket but it's a it's a hard plastic seal like a piece of plastic tubing some of these earlier uh, 760s actually had this made out of steel tubing 
and blued and everything. That was still in good shape, and the ones you get in the seal kits usually aren't as good as the, the original factory ones. So if that thing is still good, use it. Okay, now I gotta get this broken screw here out of this pump tube because it's going into the valve which ports out right there. And I think this calls for bent needle nose again. I don't think it's coming loose. I can't get the valve out of there and fix it if I can't get that screw out of there. And let's see if I can clean this up and get it wiped down decent anyway. Okay, right here you can see some of the bluing. The edge of the receiver halves come here and here. So in here is still pretty clean bluing. And right there is the seat for this gasket here as they call it. paper towel here. Try to keep clean towel facing out because it'll get on the table too if I'm careful and then you got another mess to clean. And if you're forgetting which way to go, generally it's lefty loosey righty tighty. Um, turn it to the left and it's not coming out. That thing is jammed in there. Ain't hardly enough there left there to grab. I think it's cross-threaded too. That's that could be a problem. I can't get that out of there. I really can't. I have to find something else I can lock onto that thing with to try to force it to start turning so I can get it out. Pro 3 REM oil there. We'll see if that works. It's got a funny smell to it because it smells like body sweat in here. I think oil's got a funny smell to it. Had to use the screwdriver on the other side of this tube here to. Oh, I can't get the. Who in the world has all that that doggone grease all over everything? Jesus, they are loaded with grease. Oops. That's a hammer piston and a hammer spring. 
see if but somebody just coated everything with grease. Like they're putting assembly, a graphite assembly lube on a camshaft install. These things don't need to be covered and in, in, in coated with grease and oil and all kind of stupid shit. All that does is gum up the works. Anyway, there's a screwdriver slot on there. You can use that to help get the thing loose and push it through. That was a cocking piston. That's what that was, cocking piston. Uh, the end, end came off the exhaust valve. That was the cocking piston. This is the hammer piston. And it basically works like that. Thing, there's grease all over everything. The Molly, Molly lube goes from a platinum gray to black after a time. Okay, anyway, I still can't get that screw out. I even tried getting this, these locking, locking crescent wrench on there. I just, I can't get that doggone thing to come loose. Basically, get everything apart but that friggin' thing, and I can't find my vice grips or anything, and I'd swear that thing is cross threaded. I can tell by that little dimple sticking up right there, it's not moving. So, I've got all the other parts out of the other end of the tube here, and there's a bit of a ridge on there. I'm going to have to take a rat tail file and go around it to put a chamfer on there so these parts can go in and out a little easier. Just got to get the screw out to get the valve out. You can see part of the valve down through there. I don't know. I can't get that out. I'll have to monkey with it. Okay. Well, I tried to use a, my Dremel here, it's got the, they got the, the speed uh, speed control built in now. And I had to wind up, I tried to use a cutoff wheel to cut a slot in the screw there, which goes through that hole, which I think somebody put the wrong screw in the wrong place, basically. It's too big, got in there tight and broke off. So I'll have to try to see if I can get it get it out from the inside. I don't know. At least I got it apart. It's a little rough right there. But I can use the drum sander and uh, sander this or sanding rolls as some of you call them. And sand and sanding and smoothing when I go to polish it, and that'll take a good bit of that out. And that'll be fine there. Unless I can get that screw out of there, which is going to be tough because it's in a rough spot. That's the front of the valve with the pinhole in it, so it's right up against it. So I may have to buy a new valve, I don't know. Or see if I got so I can find some new old stock or something. But at least I finally got it out by taking this uh, garnet stone here sticking it down in there and grinding that down enough to push it out 
And here we have the exploded view of the valve. Pretty typical. They're either flat, they have either have a flat head on the main valve section on the right, or it's a cone shape. This one happens to be flat. And some of those parts will be replaced with the with the seal kit. Well, it's been some tough going, but we got it apart. Since the, I had to grind that what's left of that screw off smooth with the valve to get it out, my son's going to take that part of the valve and uh, take it to work. He's a tool setter, so he machine tool setter, so he knows uh, the tool and die man. He's going to have him see if he's got an easy out small enough to, to, or some other way to use to get the end of that screw out for me. But, well, I got that apart and wait to see if he can fix that. We can order this. I can order the seal kit and start uh, digging out my water bottles and buckets and all that stuff to to um, clean the, the metal, like the, the steel parts basically, so I can use the bluing and rust remover and all the rinsing and bluing and all of that. And I got to find a brush I can use for the citrus strip on the, on the uh, receiver halves so I can get the old paint off. Get, it all, get that all cleaned up real nice and then use some gloss black rust-oleum on it to make that look nice and new again. It'll look good when I get it done but who boy is going to just kill me get all these broken screws and stuff and, and the parts are all the, are, are sticky but coated with black grease at the same time or too much oil or whatever the hell it was, but it turned black and goopy and nasty. Reminded me of Molly Lou. Somebody just messed this thing up. But don't worry, Jeff. We'll uh, get her back together for you and make it like new. Just a little bit better. A little up upgrading here and there. And I still haven't found a, another full length rifle barrel for the early models to put on this thing I was wishing I could but firm definite maybe there. And let's see if I'm forgetting one. I guess that's about it. So keep your gun oiled your powder dry and good Lord willing the creeks don't rise. We'll see you again.